What's up, guys? So I wanted to talk about doing the um, the triple bypass board mod on a VA1 Genesis 3. It's very similar to doing it. I was following three sets of directions. One from somebody who did it on the on this exact model, somebody who did it on a VA4 Genesis 2, and somebody who did it on, um, I think, another Genesis 2, but he installed the board on the back side uh, in line with the DIN connector. That, that's how I wanted to install it because I like to pretend that this is a Voltar mod, but obviously it's not. I'm just a weirdo. Um, this is an option. Uh, it's not necessarily supposed to be done this way because it is a little bit difficult getting these grounds soldered um, and these through holes soldered when you're basically putting the DIN connector through two boards. So it is a little bit difficult getting everything soldered up correctly. You just need to take a little bit of time with your soldering iron to make it a little bit warmer. Stick the soldering iron down into the hole, get everything nice and, and molten, and, and add some extra solder to get, to get everything done. But it's not too difficult. Uh, I had to leave the capacitor on my board because my RGB transcoder for to transcode the RGB signal to component works off of um, TTL level sync. And that's what that's there for. If you remove that, you get like straight 75 ohm stuff. So you can use like your your SCART cables to your PVM and stuff like that. But I just have consumer CRT screens with uh, component inputs. Um, the main part about this mod, this removing this chip here may not be necessary. You can test it without removing this chip. Um, this chip was removed because a guy who installed it on this model Genesis removed this chip in order to inject the RGB from the mod board into these lines here. These ones, these, there's a few pins over here for the RGB lines. And that's where he put them. He removed the chip to do it. He also removed all these surface mount, these surface mount components here. Um, but I don't think that's actually necessary. I removed the chip anyway, um, because, well, using my, using hot air guns is fun. Anyway, the pins here are for RGB, and this pin here is sync. Uh, this pin is left audio, this is right audio, and this is, um, what is that for? That's for uh, PSG. I don't know what PSG is for. Um, well, I mean, to go along the line of that, I actually don't even know what XR and XL is. I don't know what CR and CL is. I know I, I put in XR and XL because to these points there because that's what the other guy did um that installed it on this board he didn't do cr and cl so i don't know if this board can do cr and cl i don't know what those are so right now i don't really care um i think it has some xr and cr and xl and cl might have something to do with the genesis's um expansion ability like you know with the uh 32x stuff and with the uh um, Sega CD stuff. Um, I guess I'll find out sooner or later. Maybe it doesn't matter with me because this doesn't really take a Sega CD um, because it's a Genesis 3. Uh, YR and YL are your audio lines. 5 volt isn't necessary to put on when you're putting the board together like this because it gets the um, 5 volt signal directly from the, the board through the, the DIN connector so I soldered it up that way. Um, and beyond that, let's go back over here. The pins here that you'll need, since it's not... When you're doing this mod on this Genesis using information from the RetroRGB website, there's no text explanations about most of this stuff. Um, especially not for the Genesis 3. There is a little bit of explanation for the Genesis 2, but it's mostly just pictures. Um, this, for, for RGB... Um, it's blue, green, and red in that order uh, for the blue wire, green wire, and yellow wire. And that is pins number 142, 143, and 144 on this chip. It starts at one here. And then each dot going around the outside of that chip is 10 pins. So you get over to here to pin number 140, and then you lift pins number... 42, 43, and 44, and then solder the wires to it. Uh, as for the sync signal, I it was rec it was according to the picture stuff. You are supposed to leave the pin down, connected to the board, and then solder the jumper wire to it. Um, 
I don't understand why. I did try lifting the pin and I had no sink. So this pin being down is necessary. So leave that down. Um, and I also, obviously you need to remove these surface mount components to attach the audio wires and these components here for the um, that third wire. And then I also remove this capacitor. This normally would be for um, injecting the part of the audio, uh, but I just removed it and since it was unnecessary. And that's pretty much it. Um, there was the reason why I decided to do it this way ultimately was because there wasn't enough information in the pictures available because there's no text explanations about anything when it comes to this model. Uh, the person who had installed it on this model of Genesis uh, where I took some of the information from he had used this header uh, when the board is installed this way that's unnecessary but for this for this model he had the board mounted right here and then he had something going on with that two pin header but I couldn't tell exactly what he did with it I couldn't tell at all so I didn't bother with this with this header here. I couldn't tell what he did, so I didn't worry about it. If you can, if you want to mount the board on the other side and do it that way, you'll have to figure that part out because I couldn't figure it out. So I didn't worry about it too much since I didn't need to do it anyway, mounting the board on this side. I guess your other option would be to give this board its own dedicated uh, video connector uh, maybe even remove the video connector on your console I don't know depends on what you want to do um, but there now should be enough information for even a regular person to do this mod um, since really the only hard part is um, lifting the pins on this chip you just use a pin and the soldering iron and you sort of lay the soldering iron against the pin and then lift it with a needle and that's pretty much it so hopefully there's enough information there for you guys um, this uh, if you watched my other video describing the sync issue I was having with a few games um, this fixed that sync issue uh, I no longer have desyncing over most of the screen on vector man I found a little bit of desyncing in uh, Earthworm Jim yesterday before I did this mod that fixed that sync issue and then the little bit of sync issue I found in Altered Beast that I mentioned in a comment that this also fixed that. So if you have a, um, a Genesis and you need TTL level sync this is an excellent mod um, you know beyond just that this mod fixes that this model's um, issues with audio. Um, being relatively low levels and mono only um, this fixed my audio so now my audio is nice and crispy just like the original Genesis is and it's totally totally freaking awesome and I'm super excited that this mod worked as well as it did and I'm gonna go put this back together and enjoy some Earthworm Jim for today all right that's about it thanks a lot guys